You have probably heard it said that Photoshop is probably the most amazing program available today for uh, editing images, and it's true. There is really no equal, and if you are planning to get into doing web design or any graphic design or image presentation, you really should take the time to learn how to uh, work with Photoshop. Now, some of the objections that people have had in the past about learning Photoshop, the first one is, uh, oh, it just seems so complex. I've looked at it before, I've opened the program, and it just seems like there's just, it's just too hard to learn. And there are some very complex operations that you can do in Photoshop, but there are also some very simple things that everybody can learn very quickly, especially as you follow along with a video series like uh, what we're doing here. Now, the other objection that uh, some have had in the past is that, oh, Photoshop is so expensive. I, saw, I see that it costs around $700. Well, that may have been true in the past, but these days um, the creators of Photoshop have come up with a new plan where you can get into Photoshop today for just $9.99. <laughs> That's $9.99. How does that work? Let's go to the Adobe website and we'll show you how. Adobe.com. Adobe is the creator of Photoshop. And let's go up here to Menu and let's choose Photoshop. And Photoshop has a brand new program. In fact, I don't believe that you can just buy the program like you used to. The only way that you can really license the latest versions of any of the Adobe products is to uh, get into a monthly plan, a monthly license. And for individuals, the, the cost of getting into Photoshop is just $9.99 US dollars per month. And a real plus, a real bonus to this program is that not only do you get Photoshop, but you also get the latest version of Lightroom, which is an amazing program. And we'll have some tutorials on that program as well to show you how you can very quickly and easily process a, a large number of images. So you get back from your vacation, you get back from a business trip, and you have a thousand photos that need processing, enhancing, and improving, and that type of thing resizing. Well, uh, Lightroom is the perfect program to help you very easily and quickly process those images. And you get the both of them, Lightroom and Photoshop, for just $9.99 a month. So it's uh, very economical to start using Photoshop these days. And really, if you're doing any type of work with images, there is no longer any excuse for not using Photoshop. So let's get started and in this lesson we'll just uh, give a kind of a brief orientation, a brief introduction to Photoshop, just show you some of the, the main ideas, the main concepts, and then as we continue in our series we'll show you how to do very specific tasks. All right, uh, just like any other program out there, the way you get started is to go up to the menu items at the very top left hand corner, click on the menu item and there's really two options to start with. You could start a brand new document, much like you would start a brand new uh, word processing document where you would get just kind of a clean slate. And let's maybe do that. Let's click on new. First thing you might want to do is give your document a name. And uh, since we're going to be using this on the internet, let's maybe change our our measuring method to pixels instead of inches. Inches would probably be more used in a print design. So let's change those to pixels. And when we're working on the internet, uh, we want to set our resolution to 72. So set that to 72. Here you can choose whether you want to just have a plain white background to start with. You could choose a color if you want, or you could have the background just completely transparent. Let's set it to transparent for now. And as far as the width goes, for an image to be used on the internet, it kind of depends on what you're planning to use that image for. If you're looking to design a banner or a graphic that goes all the way across your big wide screen, then you might think in terms of around 1200 to 1300 pixels in width. And your height might be more something like around uh, 350. Okay, so let's open that up and uh, take a look and see what that looks like. Now you might be wondering what uh, what's all the little white and gray squares. That's just a simple representation to let you know that you are working with a transparent background. 
And so whenever you see the little squares like this, you'll know that you are working with a transparent background. All right, let's take a look at some of our tools that we have here. We won't go into detail on these, but just to give you a quick idea of what some of these tools will allow you to do. Let's say we want to resize our image after we have opened it. We might think that's just a little too wide. Well, we could take our crop tool here and just grab any corner of that. And with our mouse uh, button held down, we could drag that across and actually resize our image that way. When you've got it to be where you uh, like it, just hit the Enter key and you have resized your document. And if you wanted to, to put some text in there, just click on the little T there to select your type tool and then just go anywhere inside your document click down on your left mouse button and then you can just take your on your keyboard and start typing and if you can't see it very clearly the first time you do it uh, don't worry uh, what's what we've got going here is some white text that's kind of over top a lot of white background what you can do is just take your mouse and go up to that area where the text is click down right at the very beginning of your text with your left mouse button and slide that across to select the whole area there. And once it's selected, you can go up and change the size, again, very much like you would in a word processing program. And also change the color by going over here to where you see the color swatch. And let's change it to something that we might be able to read a little easier. And there we have our text. Now, once you've created something like uh, some text in your uh, project, now we can go back up to the very top tool here. This is probably the tool that you will uh, want to learn and use the most, and that's our Move tool. Once you have selected that, you can go back to uh, the text that you've just created and click down with your mouse and move that text around, reposition it to whatever you want. And uh, in future tutorials, we'll talk more about the various tools that you have available here in your toolkit. Uh, let's maybe uh, open up some images. Let's go back up to our menu options here and click on file again. And this time, rather than use the new button, let's use the open button. And what this does is it takes you to the hard drives of your computer. And uh, if you're like me, you might have uh, six or seven hard drives connected to your computer. The first time that you use this, it might look something more like uh, uh, this where your hard drives are being represented here and what you just basically need to do is navigate to the hard drive where the images are that you want to open and in this case I think I'll go to elements and here we are inside one of the folders on our hard drive now if you're not seeing images here uh, there may be a couple of reasons for that first of all check up here and uh, it may be that you are listed uh, as showing as details and your folder might look more like this and it might be very difficult for you to find the image that you're looking for unless you know the name of the file so what you want to do is uh, go back up in the corner here um, and select large icons or extra large icons to see the images represented all right, and uh, know that you don't have to just select uh, images one by one. If you want to bring in 5, 10, 20 images at once, you can do that. Let's maybe open up 5 or so. Can open up this one. Just hold down the Control key on your keyboard as you continue to select more images. All right, and when you have uh, a number of images that you would like to work with selected, just hit the Open button, and that will bring those images into Photoshop. You'll notice that each of the images are represented up here, and you can tab through them depending on which one you want to work with. Now, there are basically two things that you will want to do with your photographs to get them ready to be used on your website. One is that you'll want to perhaps enhance the photograph. You may want to correct the colors, the exposure, add a little saturation perhaps, and all of that can be done very easily in Photoshop. The second thing that you'll want to do is prepare the image to be the size that is more appropriate for website use. As you probably know, the photographs that cameras are taking these days, our digital cameras, are usually somewhere in the neighborhood of 5,000 pixels 
on the long edge by about 3,000 pixels on the narrow edge. So if, for example, we look at this one, this is about 5,000 pixels across. If we wanted to find out exactly the size, we can go up here to Image and choose Image Size, and that'll bring up a little box to tell us exactly how wide and high this is. It's actually almost 5,500 pixels by 3648. And uh, this is just way too big to be used on a website. And so we need to resize it as one of the tasks uh, to get it ready to be used on the internet. And in another tutorial, we'll show you how to easily resize images. But in addition to resizing, like I say, we, want, we may want to enhance the image. And if we go up to our tab here that says Image, we'll see that we can make a lot of adjustments. Let's say we're not quite happy with the exposure. We can click on Brightness and Contrast. And with the sliders here, we can change the exposure of the image. Add a little bit of contrast to kind of make the image pop a little bit more. Let's say we wanted to add some uh, saturation. We can go back here to Adjustments and go down to Hue and Saturation. And you want to be careful not to uh, do too much of this. Now, depending on how you want to use your image, uh, or maybe perhaps along with a blog article, you may not necessarily want it to be in a horizontal layout and you may not necessarily want to have all of the trees and, and wood and stone here. So you may want to crop this to make it more pleasing and more useful to go along with your article. And remember how we can crop. We just go up to our crop tool up here and uh, point to one of the edges and we can click down on our left mouse button and start dragging it across. Something like that. And when you're happy with the crop, just hit the Enter key and you've got a cropped image. Now I think I'll go ahead and quickly um, just resize this so we can be ready to use it uh, on the internet. I'm going to use keyboard shortcuts. That's the way I prefer to work. Is It's a lot faster. Just Control alt i will bring up our image size. And here, if it's a blog article, we we'll probably want to not go more than about 350 in width, 350 pixels. And if we have this little chain link uh, connected, it's going to also automatically adjust our height to keep the image in proportion so it doesn't stretch out uh, one way or the other. Now, normally we would have, uh, for the internet use, we would type in 72 here, but these days Photoshop is automatically kind of taking care of that for you in the background. If we were to, at this point, type in 72 pixels per inch, you would see that it also changes the width and height, and we'd have to go back up here and type in our 350 again. Okay, and uh, once you're happy, just hit OK. You'll notice that it really gets kind of small. The first time you use Photoshop, you, you might end up looking at that and say, wow, that's really small. That's much smaller than what I ever intended. Should I go in and resize it? Well, no, um, what you're seeing here is the size in kind of a proportion to what it used to be before we um, made the change. It's actually, when you use it on the internet, going to be much bigger than that. And if you, at this point, uh, just hit down on your control key and hit your plus key, you'll see that you can make that image larger and you can make it fairly large again on your screen before you start losing uh, resolution. You see, if you go too far, you start it starts getting really pixelated. And that means that you've gone beyond the actual size that you've adjusted it to. But just know that um, just because it looks really small after you change the size does not necessarily mean that it's going to be that small when you use it on the website. Okay, maybe we'll just save this so that uh, we're ready to use this on the internet. And the way that you can save is go up to File again and do a Save As. We like to do Save As because we have actually resized it. If we just use Save at this point, we would be rewriting over top of the image and we would actually be destroying the original image. Now, of course, you probably have them backed up somewhere, hopefully. <laughs> but just a good practice is to do a Save As and then give it a different file name so that you're not overwriting the original image. And you might even want to uh, save the 
resized ones in a different folder so that you can easily find them. And uh, so we might say, and just drop them into that. You might want to give your image a name that you'll re remember it by. You'll see that it defaults to a quality of nine, and that's what I usually use for the internet. If you go higher than that, um, you might get a little bit better quality of image, but you'll see over here that you're really sacrificing in image size. And uh, internet, especially with people with slower connections, are going to find that your pages load quite slow if you're using the highest quality setting. And really to the eye, uh, especially when images are being presented on a screen, you will probably not even notice the difference between 9 and a setting of 12. Uh, but notice that the size of the image practically doubles between those two settings. And so by using a quality setting of 9, you're not really losing anything for internet use, but your pages will load that much faster. Okay, so we can hit OK. And so now we have corrected our image, we've enhanced it, we've resized it, we've saved it to be ready to use for the internet. All right, well, I believe that that does it for this lesson, uh, our introduction to Photoshop and how you can use it very easily to prepare images for your website.